All right, hi everyone. This is chapter 15's lecture, Supply Chain Management. And uh, you may be wondering why we're on chapter 15 all of a sudden, because uh, we just talked about chapter one. And that's because um, while this class is titled Principles of Operations Management, it could just as easily be called Principles of Operations and Supply Chain Management, because an operations team, quite frankly, can't exist without the managing of your entire supply chain. We've seen this uh, uh, this term prevalently uh, over the last several years since COVID-19 became a thing um, and how the disruption of supply chain can affect op your operations so drastically. I wouldn't be surprised as if in future editions of this textbook that this ends up being chapter two. So the supply chain is um, every organization that um, is involved in the product or service that you deliver to your customer from the moment that it's a raw material to the time it's delivered to the customer. All of the various organizations, all of their facilities, functions, activities, everything along the way is part of the supply chain. You've probably heard, if you've read anything about supply chains, the term logistics. Logistics just refers to the actual moving of either goods, services, money, or information. And it's both directions. So information travels both directions because you need to get your demand information to your suppliers upstream so that they can make sure that they produce the um, you know, sub assemblies that they send to you and they need to let their suppliers know so that they get the raw materials to them. And information has to flow both ways. And of course, money flows both ways and the flow of goods uh, goes both ways. There's a, a, a forward and reverse flow of goods. Uh, logistics is when you send it to the customer. Reverse logistics is when it comes back upstream. So um, here's, a, here's an image of a supply chain that might look like if you're right in the middle and you're the producer, um, you've got your direct suppliers, but before them, the, the suppliers have suppliers. And you send it to maybe a um, distributor, it could be a retail store, for example, and they sell it to the final customer. As often you don't sell it directly to the final customer. So the supply chain is, is all that's the entire sequence, all the activities, all the organizations, everything that gets it to the customer. The um, Some of the functions and activities, because we talked about you know, organizations, also uh, functions and activities right here, right? So the functions and activities refer to forecasting of demand, purchasing of items, paying for it both directions, managing your inventory, managing your information, uh, quality assurance, scheduling of everything, uh, scheduling of deliveries, scheduling of employees, uh, and delivering customer service, right? So those are the functions, activities involved. And then, of course, supply chain management would be coordinating all of that. That's what managing is about. Um, integrating supply demand management into the supply chain. Your uh, supply chain management managers are all the various levels that are responsible for managing the supply chain. Um, they would be involved in um, the operations team, perhaps, uh, logistics, the actual delivery of the, of the goods, where they're going. Um, where are we going to get our materials from? Who are we going to, who's going to be our supplier? Um, are they going to be ethically sourced? Are they going to be reliable? Are they local? Are they international? All those decisions are made by supply chain managers. Um, one of the key goals, or if not the goal, of supply chain management is to match supply to demand as well as you possibly can. So you just deter you might have to determine how much are you gonna outsource jobs? How much are you going to, um, uh, how quickly are you gonna be able to identify problems? And then um, making sure that you have suppliers and you have relationships with your customers. Your customers are you know, your distributors, your wholesalers, your retailers, uh, all of those places are your customers, right? Not the end user per se, but also them perhaps. Um, supply and demand, what happens if you have too much supply? Well, then you wasted money. It, it's very costly. You might have good spoil that you can't sell ever. You've wasted all that. If you don't have enough supply, then you have what's called opportunity loss. You could have sold more. You could have made more money, right? So that's a cost, opportunity loss. And then customer dissatisfaction can be uh, have a cumulative effect 
because I'm dissatisfied. So not only did I not buy it this time, but you know what? Every time I go there, they're sold out. I'm going to go somewhere else where they have it, right? So not only did you lose the customer now, you might lose repeat business or they might tell friends if they're not satisfied. And then the friend doesn't shop, shop there. They blast you on social media. And now no, none of their followers are shopping your place, right? So matching supply to demand is ideal. There you go, right there at the bottom. Uh, information, products, and finances are the three types of flow management. So it's not just the products or the service you deliver that's flowing through the supply chain, but also information. You need to be able to share those forecasts, your sales data, uh, updating order status, track those shipments, finances, all the payments and credit terms and title arrangements all goes through your finance team. What are some risks you might run into in supply chain? Well, we uh, mentioned uh, COVID-19 already, but uh, natural disaster, global pandemic right there uh, up top. Some of the disruptions that could happen in the supply chain. Um, who recalls uh, in the news, what was the name of it? Green something. There was a big um, uh, shipping barge in the canal that uh, turned sideways and got, got jammed up. And then the entire canal was blocked for a while um was it like a week or more uh and ev all those deliveries were not on time that were going through there from overseas right so some sort of a disaster uh can disrupt supply chain um environmental disaster there's the uh, deep water horizon that caused a lot of uh, uh oil to be lost in the ocean along with uh you know um other uh and, and negative consequences there um you know, we had um, a lot of ice recently and snow and gasoline prices went up. Um, so uh, there are a lot of ways that your supply chain can be disrupted. Um, you could have all of a sudden your suppliers aren't producing good quality um, supplies to you. And then um, now you've got um, product recalls because your product isn't uh, living up to the reliability it used to. Negative press, liability. Um Perhaps your suppliers aren't as uh, reputable as you thought or ethical as you thought, and they're divulging information to competitors um, that could weaken your competitive position. There was an example where, um, you know, Coke has their own secret recipe, right? And uh, the numerous issues of, of people trying to uh, sell that information to Pepsi. Of course, Pepsi just calls the FBI on them because they're not interested in in, in, that, in making Coke. They're interested in making Pepsi. But um, uh, still, there's there's been num numerous times where some insiders would try to sell information to somebody else because they, um, you know, they weren't ethically minded. Um, managing risk means identifying risk. Um, how likelihood, uh, how likely that risk is, and what that impact would be. Um, so three ways listed here to uh, address risk is either to avoid it, um, reduce it, or share the risk, right? Um, sharing risk would be, this is a risky investment opportunity. Maybe I'll like another business to go in with me. And we both would get a share of the profits. But if either if it ends up not going well, um, as expected, then we both lose a little bit instead of one company losing a lot, right? That's sharing the risk. Uh, maybe like a joint partnership, joint ownership of a, of a company when you're expanding overseas, perhaps that's, that's a pretty common one. Um, uh, your risk avoidance would be, you know, there's, this, this is a good business opportunity if it goes well, but based on our probability and research, it's not likely to. So we're just going to avoid the risk altogether. Um, reducing risk could be, I'm not going to invest as much because of that. Um, so I'm not, uh, you know, all of my, uh, all my eggs in one basket kind of thing. Um, so some ways you can avoid risk well is to know your suppliers, um, and then have, uh, capability to respond to various events. If, if my supply chain is disrupted, do I have um, other suppliers who I can turn to uh, in short notice, for example. Issues can arise uh, specifically with global supply chain. Um, some some of those include um, the fact that, um, you know, labor 
you know, uh, labor is lower in other places, but there are complexities such as um, the fluctuation of currency, political instability, transportation costs could increase at various times. Um, you know, uh, there's things like um, Chinese New Year is a big deal. We get a lot of our products from China and there's a, there's a time where there's no business being done for about a, a week there or, or more uh, various businesses, right? Um, there are, uh, up until recently, uh, another thing with China is that they had a zero COVID policy. So if one person contracted uh, COVID, the entire facility would be shut down for X amount of days that could lead to, to random disruptions. So knowing the um, legal issues of various companies is very important to uh, be aware of the possible risks. And of course, there's ethical issues that, that could uh, that could come up um, if a company was unethical and was act acting unethically in the uh, global market, such as bribery of government uh, officials. Um, so of course, we've legalized bri bribery in the form of lobbying, um, you know, uh, well, enough said there. Um, claiming a green supply chain when green is only minimal. I talked about in chapter one, um, plastics uh, or excess packaging. You know, um, a company wants a lot of shelf uh, shelf space or shelf, uh, what's the word, product. Um, oh, there's a certain term for it, sorry. Uh, but the idea that you are uh, product visibility on shelves Right, so they make their package overly large so that you see it, but that's a waste of materials and that, that aren't gonna be reused in any way, right? So it, it, it should fall on the companies to do it, but by pushing it on the consumer, they you know, can claim green when they could be making better decisions for the, uh, for the environment. Um, violating basic worker rights, man, if uh you know if companies could pay us less they would um which is why we have a minimum wage saying that we, we would pay you less if we could but we were forced to pay at least this much um and uh, and doing things that are constantly um, against labor laws uh, and trying to get away with it such as um telling their employees they can't discuss uh, uh salaries when that's you know forbidding that is actually illegal um, things like that, right? So uh, ethical issues and supply chains, you have every organization along the length of your supply chain that you have to look into um, whether they are um, acting in an ethical manner because you could develop uh, a lot of uh, negative consequences when you are acting unethically, right? You could have a um, fines or you could be shut down or you could have a lot of negative PR that could cost you business. So it, it does behoove you in the long run to have a, an ethically uh, minded outlook and um, strategy. Um, what are some responsibilities of management? Okay, so um, you've got uh, legal, economic, and ethical, right? So being knowledgeable about the laws and following the laws is your legal responsibility. Um, being economical, so making sure that you are uh, able to meet demand, but not uh, having excess costs to do it. And then um, being ethical, right? Conducting your businesses in ways that are consistent with the moral standards of society. That's a good definition there. Um, it's, it's the right thing to do is your responsibility, and there can be immense negative consequences if you don't. Maybe not in the short term. Maybe in the short term, you'll have high profits, but you know, it takes its toll. All right, um, strate strategy, tactics, um, a lot of various definitions of those, but in general, the idea is strategy is a long-term outlook of uh, coming from the very top of your organization, whereas tactics are the short-term decisions that your mid-level managers might be able to make. And then your operational uh, responsibility would be your day-to-day -day, uh, uh, decisions. So. Um, strategic responsibility would be the major things that are long-term, such as capacity planning that would go into the design of your, um, actual facilities itself, 
um, how you are going to um, align your supply chain, how you are going to determine risk and make decisions. Your tactical responsibilities would be forecasting demand, um, collaborating with other departments or other uh, people in your supply chain. Um, your operational responsibility would be your you know, day to day, your scheduling, receiving of inventory, transforming those raw materials into the finished products, um, shipping them, controlling and monitoring them, right? That's your operational responsibility. So strategy is your, uh, your long-term, tactical is your short to intermediate term uh, uh, responsibilities, your operational is your day-to-day. -day. The procurement department is also known as the purchasing department. Uh, you've got a purchasing manager typically, and they're responsible for the sourcing of uh, materials, parts, part supplies, um, and the goal is to uh, implement the plans for all those things that support operations. When you're managing inventory, uh, a couple of things to uh, keep in mind is uh, the velocity rate at which material moves through a supply chain um, helps you to uh, manage your inventory levels better. The bullwhip effect. So this is a term that's going to come up a lot. It, it's there's several variations of questions that you might encounter on various quizzes that refer to the bullwhip. But uh, if you uh, think of a bullwhip, so think of like um, think of like Indiana Jones. If you ever seen uh, one of those movies, and he has the whip, and when you flick that whip, you make a small move of your wrist. But by the time it gets to the end of that whip, there's a loud crack, and 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 the 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 whip is you know this much of a distance from the floor to where it cracks right whereas a flick of your wrist you've moved it uh, you know a few inches the idea that a small change here of my wrist has that loud effect on the other end right Sh small variations uh, of, of what's happening have huge consequences as you get further and further up or down the uh, supply chain if I have a stock out and I need something um, sooner uh, than my supplier has to scramble and their supplier suppliers have to scramble and so on and so on. And it might not be, I might not be able to get that item. Um, the other way, same thing. If I am, if I can't produce this raw material, now my dis people that I distribute those to can't produce the um, sub assembly. They can't send it to the, uh, the company in the middle of the supply chain and so on and so on. And then you have, stock outs at the other end, you have uh, upset customers, you have back orders. Now you got to fill those back orders before you can fill the new ones. And it takes a while to get back on track. So um, that's why the, uh, the amount of information you have should be timely and uh, transferred and shared as much as possible. We already mentioned logistics. Um, here's some ways that you can um, track your items. Um, the, the items might be moving just through a facility. They might be coming into your facility. They might be leaving your facility. Um, one thing you can do nowadays is track them with RFID um, chips uh, in the packaging so that you know when it's set down one place or set down another place exactly where it is. Um, managing returns. So what happens if you send a product out and it's defective or the customer's not happy with it? Will they return it? So you have to be able to manage the return and transportation backwards of goods up until the point at which somebody's going to ultimately eat the cost. Um, there are two elements to return management. One is uh, called gatekeeping. That re refers to making sure that if it's claimed to be damaged, it actually is. Um, if not, you can sell it still, repackage it and sell it um, if it's if it's uh, in quality condition. Um, you know, making sure that the product is working fine, that it can be put back in a uh, packaging that's, you know, uh, appears to be new, um, maybe sold, sold returned or sold at a discount, whatever the case is. Um, so that would be gatekeeping. Avoidance would be to find ways to minimize it, making sure that you've actually done your homework as a marketing team. You're putting out products that customers actually want. Um, you're sending the right amount of items. You're matching supply to demand. That could be ways to avoid returns to begin with. 
And then how do you create an effective supply chain? Um, strategically sourcing. You have to be able to trust, communicate, um, quickly share information. That's what velocity of information is. Um, know all the links of your chain. That's what the visibility refers to. Um, being able to manage uh, various events that could occur um, quickly and timely, and then being able to measure those through various performance metrics. All right, that's chapter 15. We'll see you in the next chapter. Thanks, everyone.